News. The rain has eased in the state's far north and water levels are starting to drop, but floodwaters are still keeping some communities isolated. In Cooperpedi, at least 50 travellers have been stranded, some of them for more than a week. Patrick Martin reports. Melbourne mother and son Tamara and Dylan Keyes were supposed to be home last Tuesday, but a decision to spend one more night in Cooperpedi after getting some bad family news has now dragged their stay out to nine nights. We've been up and down yeah. um, emotionally. Got, like I said, with the family news is really, really yeah. devastating, but yeah. the people here have been amazing. Yeah. With the Stewart Highway still closed because of flooding, they considered returning home the long way, a six-day trip through Queensland and New South Wales. Well, we can't really wait it out. Dylan's yeah. got to be back at school. Yeah. Um, I've got to get back to work. The Red Cross has taken on the task of identifying just how many people are stranded in the opal mining town and what help they need. We think that there's probably about 50 people that have already approached Red Cross to get information and support, but that's conservative because um, some people have already left. Adelaide resident Kawiyam Kim has spent a week in Coobapiti, stuck in transit after visiting Uluru and Kings Canyon with her two children. They said that they may be uh, provide us the free flight or, or uh, the storage of the vehicle, so many you know, stuff to go back home. People on the APY lands are home, but they're surrounded by the flood waters and food stocks are dwindling. We're still waiting for the rain to stop, for the trucks to come in, but I don't know, it's, the rain is really big. The rain belt is moving east, with the Weather Bureau reporting the risk of heavy falls has reduced, but more evidence of the damage left behind is emerging. These images from the Udna Data track demonstrate why motorists are being urged to keep off closed outback roads. And Patrick Martin joins me now from Cooper PD. Pat, how are the evacuation plans going? Well, Jess, many uh, stranded travellers here in Cooper Pity were expecting to be here at Cooper Pity Airport tonight. And at about this time, they were expecting to be boarding an Australian Defence Force plane and heading back to Adelaide. That was the message they were given by the state's emergency services. And they spent most of the afternoon making difficult decisions about which of their belongings they'd be taking with them. However, late uh, this afternoon, they were told that the first evacuation flight is likely to leave late tomorrow at the earliest. And the people that I spoke to, whilst obviously a little disappointed that they weren't leaving, were ultimately happy that authorities were just looking at every single way possible to get them out of the situation that they were in. And there's no doubt that everyone involved in this operation is reviewing how best to get people out, given that the flooding on the Stewart Highway at Glen Dambo is reducing. It may be actually more inefficient for people to fly back to Adelaide, leaving their cars and caravans here, only to have to turn around in possibly a few days' time to come back up and get their, uh, get their things. And so ultimately, like much of this flooding emergency, it's very much a wait and see situation up here in Cuba. Back to you, Jess. Patrick Martin reporting there.